Hi guys, Paul Pluter on the Paul Pluter channel. Today I'm doing a paid review for my good friend, Father Richard. <clears throat> advice on a trade. Now, I have actually given him this advice, but I thought this would make a great video. Hi Archie, I enjoy the spirit and honesty of your videos and your great humor too. To make a long story short, <clears throat> several months ago I decided to go for a Pilot's IWC Le Petit Prince Edition 3777. Brand new from the New York Boutique. Boutique. You might chide me, but I still think it's such a cool and sturdy watch in many ways. But yes, vulgarly overpriced for a Valjoux-based movement. I bought it new because of a bad experience of buying from Torno and elsewhere. Based on things I've read in your videos about the pros and cons of ETA, it seems like a good compromise between some brand like Longines that just flips ETAs as is into watches and something up the stratosphere of Rolls-Royce servicing costs, but sh not sure compared to Longines how far behind IWC is at the entry level. But I can't dismiss them too easily as a serious brand. I rather like some of their higher watches and they say the Valjoux 7750 in mine is modified, whatever that means today. So far my so far my IWC is keeping good time and looking good, which is what I wanted. Here's the thing. I recently uh, I came across a trustworthy brick and water mortar authorized dealer in Philadelphia, Govberg, associated with Tim Mosso and Watchbox, with a good reputation for pre-owned pieces. I saw the I saw and instantly admired a rare 37mm JLC Master a Reserve de March caliber 928. From back in the day, 1998-2001, love the aesthetics, the black dial and quality. Okay, maybe the size is small, but proportions seem to work. I called to ask questions about service history, etc. They say one previous owner that the movement is one of the JLC's most reliable calibers used by Vacheron uh, and not too fussy about adjustments or dear for, to service. Part of me hesitates uh, given I have a new watch with a um, ubiguous, reliable, serviceable movement. Plus the fact of having paid almost 5,000 US and cannot now do that again to own both or sell my IWC at a ridiculously depreciated price. But here is a unique chance to own a nice piece of JLC heritage in, in the one JLC dial color I like. I really love the reserve complication, the date circle and the visibility of the lovely movement seems close to the finishing you find in much higher watches but without going 15,000 and beyond. I would like to I would use it the way I use the IWC on a daily basis and with care even with the with the years on it even if the IWC seems a little tougher this particular JLC seems very hard to resist and fine for that matter. Mind you, I'm not interested in reselling or investing in this, this soft market. For I'm in it for the love of the watch. The JLC is going for about 5600 on its own, but we are talking about a trade where I would pay a max difference of 2000 Actually, I'm waiting for a response from them on that score, but I wanted to know your thoughts about what might or might not be a good deal here. Not sure I really like JLCs other than this one, except the similar black dial triple date master that is out of production. Part of me thinks it's a step up direction without burning too much in a hole in the ho of a hole into my already somewhat burdened pocket. It's the only reason right now I would consider parting with the IWC pilot. Thank you, Father Richard. Okay, Father. Uh, Govberg themselves there, I personally have never dealt with them. However, uh, I've got a, quite a few fans who've dealt with them, and they seem to be pretty good, reliable sorts. So, uh, I, I, I wouldn't have a 
problem with you buying from Goldberg. Um, if you get a chance, just ask Tim why he keeps his glasses in his hair. That really irritates the shit out of me. But speaking about watches, I think they're okay. They're okay. They're, they're a reasonably good dealer. I, I've, I've, um, I mean, I'm in Australia, so it's hard for me to buy from the US. But uh, yeah, I, I can get it. Uh, Father, I don't approve of you buying things boutique edition and then wholesaling them out. Father, 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 forgive me for I have sinned. I have taken advantage of poor fools who have bought things at full retail and then have decided to part with them. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Um, I, I, my honest advice to you, to be honest with you, Father, honest advice to you would be to keep the IWC. Keep it. IWC. I love IWC. Uh, the 3777 is a great model. It's quite a popular, it's a nice model. Pilot's Watch, classic Pilot's Watch. Um, what I would do is I would just put the JLC on MasterCard or Visa. Pay it off over time. Get a low rate credit card and you will be fine. I mean, these little gems in life is what makes life worth living. When we're in the pine box, Father, <clears throat> we've got all the time for redemption and to uh, seek forgiveness for our sins. In the meantime, Father, I would, uh, I would certainly buy it. I think it's a very cool watch. I mean, you're going to have two really cool genres. Sports Pilot, IWC. And you're going to have a JLC. I wouldn't be selling one to fund the other. I think that's a very bad way to go. It's, it's, it's really... Um, it's not the way I would do things. Um, I, I would say Jager LaCoultre, they make some amazing pieces. Uh, I, I would really, my honest advice to you would be just keep both. Just build a simple, simple little collection over time. That's what I would be doing. I would be building a simple, beautiful little collection over time. Um, <clears throat> I'd possibly add a Rolex down the track. Three-piece, four-piece combo meal deal. That's the way I would do it. Uh, I'd add something, you know, something simple. I'm thinking Milgauss could be cool. Milgauss. Uh, if not a Milgauss, maybe an Explorer 1. What do you reckon, Father? Come on. Forgive me, for I have sinned, Father. Uh, I, I would seriously... I would seriously say just grab the JLC. 37 mil. I think 37 is kind of for a dress watch. It's... You know, my world time is 37. And it's not ridiculously... I kind of say that the line in the sand is 36 mil. I think 36 may be a wee bit too small. But 37? No, I think 37's fine. Fine, fine, fine. I'd, I'd go for it, Father. I really would go for it. I can't see, you know, you've got to, in life, you know, we kind of, there's so many bullshit things we have to put up with. We have to put up, we've got to, you know, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard to resist. I reckon if you add one or two watches every couple of years, you add a watch a year, so what? So what? So what? I think best advice for you don't don't wholesale the iwc keep it get the jagula culture and then father start saving for a oyster perpetual or a uh a milgauss that'd be a you know, black dial milgauss would be super cool keep it black dials i think a few rules really really do work see for me i'm one brand per watch um uh, one brand per watch and i in your case why don't you do one brand per watch and black dials Black dials only. <laughs> that is holier than thou. Holier than thou. I think black dials could be really cool. Really, really cool there. And uh, Paddock actually made a 
a watch for the high officials in the, the Catholic Church. They had the purple ellipse, purple ellipse, which was given to, um, it was given to big supporters of the church. And uh, yeah, I, I, I really do think, so the church approves of high-end watches. There is no question of that. Uh, Pope John Paul II, he was a huge Datejust wearer, loved his Datejust, can't blame him, can't blame him at all, can't fault the man for that. Um, so I, I would say just go for it, man, just go for it. Keep it in moderation, don't, you know, I, I wouldn't be, um, I, I, I wouldn't be, you know, slow down a bit, pay, pay, pay off each, pay off one before you buy the next. And uh, you've got to get yourself some fun. Have a bit of fun. Have some, just just have some fun. It, it, it'll keep you happy, man. You need, everyone needs a hobby, okay? You need a hobby. It keeps you straight. It keeps you honest. That's what I do, man. Just just add slowly. Don't sell the IWC. It's a great watch. Don't, don't be flipping and changing in this. That's just silly because you're going to lose out. You're really going to lose out. And... Nah, don't do that. Don't do that. Stay firm, stay steady, and keep watching the Archie Luxury Channel. Like, subscribe, and tell your tell your Catholic friends. Hey guys, my name is Paul Pluter. I'm the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield the Third, AC3. Guys, guys, I need a bit of help. I need a bit of help. I need a bit of help. It's very hard running a YouTube channel relying on Google Ads alone. I'm in a special niche and I speak my mind and I've, I don't have all those Seiko wannabes, all the people who want assurance about their affordable shitters. So I've got to really try hard to bring in the revenue. Guys, if you like my content, if you think I'm a great, great chap to have around, why don't you help me out? There's a number of ways you can help me out. This will keep me full time on YouTube. Look in the description of this video for some ways you can help me. You could sponsor me on Patreon. That allows you to send a small monthly amount to me every month. It can be a dollar, it can be a hundred dollars, whatever you can afford. The next way you can help me is, well guys, I I really need some money to keep things going. Paid reviews. On the Paul Pluto channel, I run paid reviews. For as little as 20 US dollars, I'll give you an opinion of your collection, of what you're looking at, I'll try and answer. There's heaps of other ways you can help me. I do telephone consultancy. For 50 US dollars, I will talk to you on Skype or WhatsApp and answer your horological or personal problems. Any questions, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Now guys, please help us out. Look down below and if you, if you, if you could help us out, I will stay here and make videos full time on YouTube.